Now it's time to get into the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, he is re-signed. We no longer have to talk about this, uh, whether or not Dak's going to come back or whatnot. He gets the long-term deal, and I think it's going to make a huge difference in their team. That They no longer have to worry about this. And the fact that uh, their defense is going to be a little bit better this year Markedly as well. Markedly improved. Markedly improved. As long as Nolan is not there, it can't be any worse. <laughs> I mean, for the love of God, how does it, if he ever gets another job in the NFL, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Mike Nolan was that bad. Going back to the 3-4, which is what this team is built to do, mm -hmm. uh, part of my grade is that they just didn't give up on guys, which they could have. They could have given up on Jalen Smith. Wouldn't have made any sense to me, but they could have. Right. Didn't do that. Resigned Dak Prescott. That was really, <laughs> to me, that was the two biggest objectives of the offseason. Your offense is fine. And Ezekiel Elliott's on a bloated contract, and I don't know that he will ever be that running back again. Mm -hmm. But I think he's still going to be serviceable. I mean, I don't think it's going to be. You're not going to be as bad running the ball as you were last year. I agree with that. And I think the defense, adding Keanu Neal, adding DeMonte KZ, both guys coming over from Atlanta. I love where their, KZ. Where their new, uh, their, their new defensive coordinator came from. These are two guys that he really, really likes. I love DeMonte KZ. What about him? I, there's just something. He plays with a reckless abandon that I'm a big fan of with safeties, mm -hmm. especially sub package safeties. Because that is a dude that can come, if he can stay healthy, he has had a lot of health issues. As has Ke Keanu. And he has, but you got him on a value. This is a guy that if he comes in and plays to the level of, of what I have seen him play, this is one of the value signings of the year. Now, I don't know how I feel about him at you know, sub linebacker and things like that. But Dan Quinn knows better than I do. Mm -hmm. Coached him for a long time. So I would wager he knows markedly better than I do. And I I'll be honest with you, I'm biased because I'm a Jets fan. I liked the signing of Terrell Basham. That's a rotational piece that can get after a quarterback. He didn't have a huge role with the Jets. He didn't fit the scheme there completely well mm -hmm. because they needed a, they needed a guy that was a legitimate can win by himself. Not necessarily what you need when you've got Demarcus Lawrence on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, you already have one of those. This is a guy that can be the cleanup crew, the, the Trey Hendricks in effect. I actually really like that signing. It's the reason it's the other one on the screen. Still feel like they've got some things to, that they need to shore up the secondary with. Corner. Got to go. For the love corners. of God, mm -hmm. draft Patrick Sertan. <laughs> uh, there's very little I'm confident of, of uh, with, uh, with a month to go before the draft. Right. If Pat Sertan's on the board at, t at 10 when Dallas comes up, that's who they're taking. And w as well they should. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, that is the one thing that, that killed you last year. Well, your entire defense was god-awful last year. But you can't continue to go through and have Dak Prescott putting up historic numbers and your defense doing the same thing. It just won't work. So yes, going back to the uh, going back to the the four three is going to matter. But you got to be four. What three four? Oh, excuse me. Three. Wait. Okay. Going back to the three four. Excuse me. I had that backwards. Mike um, Nolan ran the four three. I thought it was the other way around. Maybe it is. Now, now you got I me second guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the other way around. Um, but anyway, switching the defensive scheme is obviously going to help. I feel like Dan Quinn is a really good defensive coordinator in this league. We know he was not a, a good head coach, but he is a really good defensive coordinator that is going to make a difference for this Dallas Cowboys team. Now, uh, to me, the pressure is completely on Mike McCarthy now. You have... No excuse, barring another tr catastrophic injury, of this team being bad. This team even being mediocre would be a failure. <clears throat> you have to come in and you have to be 10-7. and seven, Or this season's a failure. Do you agree? I would agree with that. By the way, they're running a hybrid of both. Okay. Dan Quinn's done both and apparently he plans on it. There's pieces here, like Terrell Basham fits in a 3-4. Mm -hmm. But if they're going to be multiple, then I'm, that makes me like that even better. Uh, this defense is going to be markedly improved just because Dan Quinn's such a good coordinator. Mm -hmm. I understand he was not a great head coach. I understand his time management skills leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> he still got to a Super Bowl as a head coach. Not a lot of guys have done that. And he was an elite defensive coordinator. 
I like him with McCarthy. I think the, the hate on McCarthy got ridiculous last year. He trusted the wrong guy. He trusted Mike Nolan, and he shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And it took him one year to figure it out and unwind it. And they spent a shitload of money to go get a high-end defensive coordinator. Right. If you, I mean, if your defense is half-assed with, with, with what Dak Prescott was doing when he got hurt last year, if he's 80% of that and your defense is even nominally improved, you're the second best team in this division. Agreed. You're battling with the Giants because I think the Giants are close to the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. But I think the two of them are close to the Washington football team is the best team in this division too. The only team that, that I would be stunned if they won this division is the Eagles. If the Eagles win this division, then the apocalypse has happened. The four horsemen have shown up and we're all <laughs> fucked. Yeah. I think there's zero chance of that happening. I like the Dallas Cowboys to be contenders in the NFC overall. Um, they could, you know, their ceiling is a team that can go to the, to the Super Bowl. Their floor to me has to be two games over 500. Or else you've wasted all this time. You've got all of this talent on the offensive side of the ball. It has to be done now. I would say you so. have to win. You that. have a shitload of draft capital, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this team has, what, 10 picks? Is that right? 10 picks. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. They have a comp pick in every round that comp picks are a thing except the last one. You have a ton of ability to get better. And I think they're going to. Patrick Sertan would change how I feel completely about this defense. Yes. Because that gives you one guy that I feel really good about being on an island by himself. Mm -hmm. I fully agree. The Dallas Cowboys, huh, it's win or, or, or get Mike McCarthy the fuck out of there. If you can't uh, win, a, <laughs> if you don't markedly improve from last year, uh, year three with Mike McCarthy is not going to matter because it's not going to be a thing. Right. If they're around the 500 mark, I think – They'll have to move on from the coach after this year. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green, and we are in the Wicked Weed studio. Check him out at wickedweedbrewing.com. Wicked Weed Brewing, drink different.